All right, Next keeping it rolling. Next we have mental health and burnout awareness. I guess something everybody, I certainly can relate to. I absolutely can relate Especially to. Especially when it comes to the NFTs. <laughs> and so we have Ty, Vanessa, and Ronan coming up. Ronan the, the Collector. Ronan the Collector. You guys are up. You're up, you're up, Ronan. you're up, you're up, you're up, you're up. <laughs> and is, is Ty and Vanessa, they'll be up here. If Vanessa comes crashing in, we'll just bring her up. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. So for some context, this was a four-person panel, and it is now a two-person panel. As you can see by the chair. Yeah. So um, a little, I'll, we'll, we'll start with introductions, a little bit of ourselves, a little bit of what we do professionally, uh, and then we'll go a little bit into our topic. Um, I am Ronan the Collector. Um, and we are talking about mental health and uh, burnout in the space. Um, I am head of partnership, uh, partner strategy for Gig Labs. Uh, we created a partner or a platform that brands can use to stand up their own platform um, and own their entire NFT experience from top to bottom, uh, primary sales through the secondary market, uh, airdrops, snapshots, all of that with a no code solution. Um, <clears throat> but I actually got into the space through collecting. Um, and that was kind of my introduction, and, and uh, through collecting and through then producing media um, in the space and content, uh, I built up a little following on social media, which brings its own mental health issues, right? Uh, aside from NFTs and an and, and, and always on economy. Um, so I think it's just a, a really good topic that doesn't get spoken about a lot. Uh, and has become kind of uh, important to me because we struggle so hard and I, it's something that I struggle with and I've struggled with for a long time and it compounds in this space because of uh, the culture of always being awake, uh, never getting sleep, being fearful of missing a drop or an opportunity uh, to make 10, 20, 100 gains, right? Like um, it's, it's a really unique place. Uh, but when you compare it to something like the stock market, that's traditionally uh, extremely mental health, uh, you know, not good for, um, oh, exactly. they get to sleep at night. They get to take the weekends off. Um, when you're in crypto, you don't have that luxury. So you often find yourself dealing with burnout and you don't even really realize that you're, you're in it until, uh, you know, you're really kind of dealing with the, the ramifications. So uh, that's kind of, you know, a little bit about me and, and, and kind of where I come from and why this uh, topic is important to uh, me personally. And I'll let Ty introduce himself and talk a little about what he does. Exactly. Thank you so much for that information about yourself. Um, amazing company. My name is Ty Baston. I am uh, the founder of Mirror Wellness Club, which is a wellness club that's specifically using Web3 technology to create membership through wellness communities. Um, currently, I'm a managing partner at a company called Culture that is a multimedia company that's specifically spoken, focusing on helping artists turn themselves into tech investors, basically. So we take independent artists build their company around so they can own their IP and treat them like their own boutique major label. And so culture stands for can our leverage teach us real equity. Um, similar to, to Ron, it's like the burnout is a thing that I've learned through trading. That's how I got into NFT trading. And you're right, when it comes to the stock market, they close on the weekends. It gives you time to regroup mentally to be able to see what your positions are going to be for Monday. But with cryptocurrency and, and NFTs, the, the, it's around the clock. And what I've experienced from the burnout is that you're more likely to make a mistake, which puts you more likely to be a victim of your wallet being hacked because you're so tired. You click on a link by not paying attention to certain things. And so we want to get into talking about all of those different type of uh, examples and indirect and direct effects from mental burnout. Yeah, I, I love that you've chosen to like focus on that as kind of like your project, right, and for the space. And I love that, that there's a lot of projects that will go out and advocate for mental health and, and whatnot. So, you know, I would say, you know, first off, uh, if that's something that you, you struggle with and, and you deal with, there's actually some, some pretty cool projects out there that you can look into that do provide support for anybody that deals with that. Um, but I think like for me, you know, one of the things that, you know, to your point, 
Um, what, what exactly do we do to deal with the burnout? How do we like counteract? Um, and how do we identify? Right, exactly. you know, uh, I think it's a really great example. Right, uh, we deal with security issues all the time, uh, very and people, heavy, and they don't stop, and they come from all types of different directions. Uh, I actually just this morning was speaking with one of my co-founders, uh, and another co-founder uh, was apparently sending text messages to employees, uh, asking them to click a link, and and basically provide him for some quick funds that he needed. Uh, how does that even happen, right? Like yeah. your, your cell phone is compromised your, yeah. because they connect the dots on Google and they use all the analytics and they can attack you from so many different vectors. Uh, Discord, through your email, through phone calls. Yes. Um, they will come at you every which way. And if you are uh, forever tired, if you are forever dealing with like sleep deprivation, um, I have a buddy who, you know, unfortunately was a victim to that. You know, uh, he gets the alert, Board Ape Yacht Club says, hey, we are, we're doing a surprise mint. Um, and 10 minutes later, he's like, oh my God, like what just happened? Yeah. And he's freaking out and we had to spend the next hour saving his assets, getting them out of the wallet that was compromised and putting him into one that was not. Uh, and this is someone who's super savvy, someone who's a very intelligent, yeah. someone who knows not to click links, but when you see an opportunity to get into the Board Ape Yacht Club, if anyone's not familiar, it's the biggest NFT project out there. They're valued at several billion dollars. Um, you think it's an opportunity to go from, you know, uh, 0.25 ETH, a couple hundred dollars, mm -hmm. to 10, 20, 30, 40 thousand dollars, because that is a real moment that has happened for people in this space, and to lose out on that opportunity uh, puts you in a state of fear. And you couple that with lack of sleep yep. and you make poor decisions. Um, and not to say that that was a situation or anything, I'm just saying like you have to be vigilant and you have, uh, diligent and you have to be aware that they're going to come at you and you need to do what you can to keep your mental health up. Yeah, and, and <clears throat> you can have amazing mental health and still be affected by the burnout, right? Absolutely. And you know, I was compromised by my wallet because I was trying to get a visible friend and I saw that they had an old limited drop. And clicking on the link, you realize like, oh, you gotta go verify your, your MetaMask. And the burnout for me at that moment, I didn't realize that it was one word missing from the MetaMask email. Next thing you know, you're clicking on it and then the security measures, it, it, they're savvy at that point, it's taking over. So for me, um, when it comes to burnout, what I've worked on is waking up and setting times where I don't talk to anybody and just focus on meditating, working out, whatever those hours are, local time when I'm not traveling. And I, I found that to be a lot more beneficial when you're, when, you're, when you're juggling multiple businesses, multiple business partners, and you're having these ongoing conversations about things in the crypto space I found for me, helping my mental health and burnout by taking that time. Them three hours a day, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. local time is like, have been game changing for me. That's excellent. And for me, uh, I've got a family, I have three children, I have a wife. Uh, you know, for anyone who has a partner um, and has gone through those moments of, you know, I, I gotta stay up late, I gotta, you know, I gotta be here, I, sorry, I, you know, can you take care of the kids because I got a mint happening, babe, I'm gonna make money. Um, you know that that becomes very stressful on your relationships and it becomes almost secondary because you see that opportunity. People change their lives. One of the best things that has ever happened to me was the Board API Club yeah. and it's been able to do a lot of things, but that doesn't matter if you're putting your money into a wallet and then you're doing things like not taking care of your mental health and putting yourself in uh, compromised positions. Um, and I love the fact that you set aside that time. So what I do in the evenings uh, is five to 9 p.m. is family time. It's for my kids, it is for dinner, it is for bath time, it is for time to me, for me to remind myself that I'm, I'm a dad. I'm not just Ronan the collector, uh, you exactly. know, who has all these bajillions of, of you know, pings and, and, and so I think like for me, um, the uh, tip that I'll, I'll give uh, to piggyback off of that is create filters. There's so much technology and, and we jump into all these, 
you know, conversations. Um, we forget to turn off the notifications for the ones that we don't need. We forget mm -hmm. to um, use, utilize our phones. I just, this is a huge like help for me, was the ability to use my phones, um, do not disturb. Yep. You know, iOS and Android, you can now actually program it down to exactly who you want to talk to in those hours, exactly what feeds you want, exactly what alerts you want access to. Um, and I went in and I did it. I spent 45 minutes saying during my work hours, I have access to Twitter, uh, Slack, email, and you know text messages from my boss, my cohorts, my yep. family. Um, and then five to nine is just my family, just like the most important people in the business, uh, the, you know, the important clients. Uh, but very often, you know, I will have clients ask, hey, can we meet at, you know, what's 536, uh, 7 p.m.? And I, it is a no. Boundaries. Uh, and I, I, and this is the thing, you have to build those boundaries, build those filters, and you have to adhere to them. Yep. You have to wake up and say at 8 a.m., that's work time, I'm turning on my work filter. You have to say, I'm not going to allow any client, no matter how large they are, no matter how how big that opportunity to infringe on those four hours of family time. Exactly. Um, it's really, really important um, to take that. I, and I agree with you on that. I think as entrepreneurs, our hardest thing is to adhere to our own rules when business comes in. And I, I, I'm fascinated with numbers. So I figure if I invest 11 hours a day into myself, I'm more likely to be healthy from a success perspective. And those 11 hours has nothing to do with business. Eight hours of sleep, three hours of that, that time to kind of like get ready to tackle what is going to be thrown at us. Because what we haven't realized is that humans 50 years ago didn't have the amount of input that we have to interact with. We got Twitter feeds, we got Instagram. Yeah, even 10 years ago, five years ago. Like now Discord, like you have so many people trying to pull attention or get information from you. And, and it's a great thing because it has provided so many life-changing opportunities, but it's the startup and how fast your mental is deteriorating in today's world versus years ago is, is, is very dangerous and is, is, is alarming to Absolutely. not be aware of. Yeah, and I think that that's important to like, not only for ourselves, Right, but I think it's also important to like keep an eye on our peers. You know, um, for anyone who is on Twitter, anyone who you know is dialed in to, to the NFT influencers and, and that you know that sphere of, of uh, people. I mean, some of these huge influencers are, are dealing with things and they're dealing with them publicly. Yep. Um, as someone who cares about your peers, as someone who cares about the space, as someone who doesn't want to see uh, you know, us lose an important member of the community, it's important for us to take the ownership to reach out, to DM, to text, and not because you need you know, another connection, not because you need them to you know, introduce you to someone or to take on more work, but because you want to check in on their mental health mm -hmm. because you feel like they may need someone to talk to. Yep. And if you don't feel comfortable having that conversation, at least facilitate the start and then point them to a resource or point them to a mutual friend, mm -hmm. right? Like it's very important for us to take care of ourselves, but I think it's also important for us to take care of our peers because yep. some of us are so in the weeds with trying to change our lives that we can't identify that we're not talking to people, that we're not taking care of ourselves, that we didn't, you know, uh, take a bath for two days. Like, exactly. you know, like there's these things that happen and you just realize it because someone else says, hey, take a breath, breathe. And I've had a friend and I have to like call him out, Jordy, like thank you so much because there's moments where like he has literally said, dude, breathe. Yes. Like you, if you take these breaths, if you breathe, you can then process the information that's coming at you in a much more productive way. And then you can deal with these things one at a time the way that we should, not with you know, a million screens in our faces, 10 mm -hmm. people trying to ping you at any given time, projects, go, notifications going exactly. off. Uh, you know, and, and it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, one of our members who he has a um, PhD from the University of Wisconsin, He's been writing these grants for the community, and he used this term, mental health first aid. So he's teaching community leaders mental health first aid. So 
if you're a barber or if you're a church leader or if you're an outreach program director, he's going into the community and he's basically saying, this is what you should do if you encounter somebody who might be dealing with mental health. And I thought it was fascinating and he's, he has like millions of, dollars of, millions of dollars of grants that he's gotten approved from the government to go into these communities to serve. So when your barber is cutting your hair and they can identify you're dealing with mental illness, they know what to say. They know how to point you to somebody. And I thought that was like very, very fascinating. And, and that terminology has stuck with me. Mental health first aid. I love that. I love that Amazing. like so much because um, that means that we are getting to a point where the conversation is much more comfortable to have. Uh, and I think for uh, a lot of us, especially for like men, I'm really proud of the fact that like, you know, we're two guys up here who are willing to like come and talk about mental health because yes. so many people feel like they can't do that. So to hear that men are taking charge and like also leading the way in mental health recovery and, and awareness, yep. um, I, man, that's super exciting for me. Yeah, women are way smarter than us when yeah. it comes to their mental. Yeah. I think because <laughs> so they, they take that time. Yeah, like yeah. they take care of the family, yeah. right? My yeah. wife is definitely the one that reminded me, and this is like 100% a true story. My introduction to um, NFTs was a project called GPK. It launched um, just over two years ago. And I will never forget it. I, I, the day before, I had to have like my wisdom teeth out last second. Um, and I had an alarm set for the actual cell itself. Mm -hmm. And so the next day, I'm, I, I literally go in, I got my teeth out, and then like four hours later, my alarm goes off, I, I wake up with like meds, and I buy my GBK. I woke up 24 hours later, and the project had sold out, and nobody had expected that to happen. They, they had a, a, ridiculously, um, a ridiculous amount of NFTs, the, the volume was high, the price was perfect, yep. um, and the experience was really cool because it, it was a little different. I don't wanna go down those, but what's cool is, is that, or what's not so cool, is that from that point when I woke up 24 hours, I slept maybe four or five hours a night for two weeks straight, and there was a moment on a Sunday afternoon, and I will never forget it, I was like going to go walk into the bedroom, and my wife stopped me, it's four o'clock in the afternoon, and she stopped me and she goes, I don't care what you have going on this afternoon, you need to go into the bedroom, and you need to take a nap, and you need to sleep, because you can't do this to yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what we like all need to remember, is like we need to like have these moments where like we realize that, but like we can realize it in someone else and help yep. them realize that, because it, it helps so much. And like from that point forward, it's like she's always the one that when I, I burnout starts to like seep in, it's like, babe, you need a little bit more of a break. And even with, that's the thing too, right? Even with all these, uh, you know, things in place to, um, you know, to, to, to curb the burnout yep. uh, or the mental health stress, it's still going to pop up. I've dealt with clinically for depression for almost 15 years. And as many like things that I've learned to be able to cope with that, um, there's still moments where like those things don't work or like, you know, it's just like, I still feel like I'm alone and like, I, there's nobody in the world that understands me or understands what the shit that I'm going through. Like there's not another, you know, person in NFTs who has three kids and who has a wife and who yeah. has a full-time job and who's got social media and YouTube and yeah, yeah. he's grinding as fucking hard as I am. And you know, uh, nobody gets it. That's not true. There They're are a hundred, 200, 2000, 10,000 of us all trying to take advantage of this moment. And, and it, we got to identify that. That's, that's what has been the most fascinating thing for me when it comes to the NFT space is the real community. There, there are bad actors, but it doesn't equate to the good actors. And you see people that has, have never met you before in real life who's like championing you in these different uh, forums or socials when they, when they see that you're expressed that you're having issues with certain things? I have never experienced a more accepting community in my life. Um. Yeah, it is. It's, 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 a, it's a very, very, like, the, so many walks of life. My overall mission, my starting NFTs were I would buy things that I would hear about, and I would gift them to all of the women that I would work with, because I saw that it was a lack of women so I would gift them. And one of, one of my clients, I gifted her uh, mf -er before it blew up. She sold that shit so fast. <laughs> and I, it, it gave me so much joy because my overall mission 
was just to be able to help women kind of see the opportunity. But the community is like, you in these group chats, these telegrams, and if you, even if you get hacked, he's like, people are like, oh man, let me send you, let me gift you some NFTs, man, I'm so sorry. And I ain't really experienced that in real life like that. I, I thought I had like really understood like a real friend. Um, and then when I found the space and I started to meet these people who had never seen my face, who didn't know who I was before this, who didn't know all the, the horrible decisions that I had made that had put me where I was at the time that I found NFTs, living with my in-laws, had yeah. lost our home. I mean, it was, yeah. didn't lose the home, but we had to sell the home. Yeah. And you know, none of that came along with me. And these people judged me just on my output, my grind, my heart, my passion. And, and from that moment forward, I realized that like, yo, I found my real tribe. Yeah. I found like my real friends. I found the ones who are gonna fucking ride or die all day long. And it means so much to me. It means the world to me yeah. that I have found them. And it's crazy because like, I don't have any of my real friends, right? That I yeah. knew for 15, 20 years from high school, from college. Um, they're not around, yeah. you know what I mean? And that was a decision that they made prior to me finding this space, right? And maybe it was because of the decisions I made. But I know like the people, the, the relationships I've made now, like those things will never tinge, right? Like yeah. we've gone through fire and brimstone, especially now, we're in this market right now, the people that are like by your side and that are like shoulder and shoulder and is like, yo, let's ride this out. Like let's mm -hmm. make the right decisions. Let's make sure we get the good information on what comes next and how yep. we can continue to, to make this thing work. Those are the ones that are gonna be with you, I assume, and I believe for, for longer than anyone else uh, probably has in your life because we've, we've really broken down so much of that, that baggage, that social, uh, you know, just barrier that comes with looking at someone uh, or hearing about someone or being introduced for them, uh, to them face to face uh, and instantly having these notions and assumptions. Yeah, and it's a, a very clear understanding why everybody is there. You know, when you bind into a founder, you bind into the utilities or the roadmap, you know, you're, you're, you're genuinely hoping that what you're buying into is that. So if you're going because I want this NFT because the utility has a pool party every, every other weekend, I like pool parties, that is what I really want to achieve, or exclusive merchandise, or mental health excursions, or kickbox, whatever it is, you know that when you go there, people of like-minded People should be there, and that's what everybody's hoping for in the space. And I think overall, it's beautiful. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I think it's beautiful. And I had a conversation really early on, and my wife was trying to understand everything, and she's like, "I'm trying to get," and I, and I tried to explain. And I think the best comparison that I have is that as you grow up throughout like your younger years in life, you always have these moments where you're able to kind of. Uh, become a phoenix, right? You're able, you go from elementary school to middle school. You can become someone new in that moment. You have middle school to high school. That's another opportunity. High school to college. Then you go and you become uh, an adult. Yep. And then you choose your career. Outside of switching careers or maybe finding religion, like where can you find such a huge shift in like yourself yep. and the people that are surrounding you for the majority of your time? Right. One of the, this is a one in a lifetime moment. This is like when the dot com happened. You know that community and those the the, the dot com, the www dot, the pampers dot com. Those communities that was built then in Silicon Valley. That's what's happening now, but it's more global. It's more. It got more depth, and and it's changing people's lives. You know, not only just financially from people that felt like they was alone, who all they could do is draw. They, they can talk. And now they have, they're leading projects. They're, they're going out and they're learning how to be like responsible. They're learning, they're learning how to go out and like really commune. And now they're not afraid to leave out of their bedroom now because they feel like I'm going to my community. These are my friends. Everybody can communicate through drawing, through painting, through whatever they're their medium is, and I think that it, it, we have an opportunity as humans to really use this in, in a good way.
I agree. So we've got, we're right at the time. Uh, I do, real quick, I do have a follow-up conversation to this conversation because I do feel it is very important for the community. So tomorrow, 265 West 37th Street, uh, and I'll give you my social in a second so you can have access to that. I am having a follow-up conversation. It is an open fireside panel and chat. Come yep. hang out, talk a little bit about what you're up to and what you're dealing with. If you would like to follow, it's at Ronin, R-O-N-I-N, D-A-C-C, or Ronin the Collector on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. I'm Worldwide Ty on Twitter and Instagram. All right, thank you. Give it up for mental health and burnout awareness in the NFT.